Okay, students, yesterday we had uh, discussed we're not afraid to die if we can all be together. So we just uh, left to the conclusion part of it and today we're going to discuss the question answers, right? Yes, so once again, it's a very humble request to all of you. Please put your name, class, pick, roll number on your Zoom ID. It will be easy for me to identify you and yes, to know that uh, this person is from my class, right? So it will uh, save us from the fake IDs that are creating a disturbance nowadays. Now, so continuing with the chapter, what do you think is the most important idea that has been discussed? What do you think about adventure? Yeah, here from this chapter, it is, you know, Gordon Cook, Alan E. and his family and the two crew members, they're going around the world on this voyage and all the problems or the hardships or the difficulties that they had to face. Right? See, they faced so much problem. They're putting the life at risk. He's putting his family's life at risk. In spite of all that, why do people undertake such dangerous endeavors? Why do they want to go on such adventures which put their lives and others' lives at risk? So why do you think people go on an adventure? Yes? Any one of you? Nalin? Vanya? Deepak, Manshu. Yes, yeah, so why do uh, people undertake adventures? Yes, it is there, like uh, some, yes, maybe to a break from the monotony, as you said. Others, they want to test their endurance, their stamina, their mental strength, their ability. Yeah, yes. And maybe, yeah, people want to make a name for themselves also that, yes, I, I did this. Yeah, to make uh, memories also, to make uh, themselves as an example for others. So that is why also people undertake adventures, right? So there are so many reasons here. And uh, like, yes, the reason why we have uh, the author going on this adventure was because he wanted to replicate the voyage which had been undertaken by Captain Cook. So whether it is people scaling the Mount Everest or going to Antarctica or swimming, you know, yes, the very dangerous water bodies. It is that it's not that they don't love themselves or their families, but yes, they want to challenge themselves. They want to see that uh, about their uh, stamina, about their endurance, about their strength, and yes, set an example for others. It's also yeah, building their self-confidence. But what because of this uh, experience, they lose their uh, self-confidence. They feel that, no, I, I don't think so I'll be able to do it. Then what? Yes? Then what? How do people come out of this thing? So we have to take all these kind of mishaps or maybe all the setbacks or the problems that happen on the way, we have to take it in the right spirit, okay? And we have to see that, yes, all these obstacles, they should not come in the way of achieving our goal, right? So yes, so what was the objective of the captain? How did he want to take his family out of difficulty? What was the solution that he found? That how is he going to make uh, repairs uh, to the boat and make sure that things are, uh, you can uh, say, in a condition to carry on with the voyage? What was one important decision taken by the captain? See, sometimes you have to make a change of plan for the welfare of yourself, for the welfare of your team members. So here he's made this big change in his plan that was what? To go to Isle Amsterdam. Right, so it was a French scientific base. He wanted to go over there and make the necessary changes or the necessary repairs to the boat. And so then he would continue with the next part of his voyage, okay? Yes, yeah, so let's have a look at the questions over here. So we, last uh, paragraph was left. We anchored offshore for the night. And the next morning, all 28 inhabitants of the island cheered as they helped us ashore, anchored off shore. So they were there in the boat itself. They did not get out of it, anchored near there. 
and in the morning there were just 28 inhabitants why because that island it was a scientific base it was not uh, you can uh, say really inhabited by the people but it was it was a used for research purposes with land under my feet again and my thoughts were full of larry and had her be cheerful and optimistic under the dire stress and of mary who stayed at the wheel for all those crucial hours most of all i thought of a 7 year old girl who did not want us to worry about a head injury which subsequently took six minor operations to remove a recurring blood clot between skin and skull and of a 6 year old boy who was not afraid to die so yes so see how brave these young children were so we have this little girl 7 year old girl she was really hurt and uh, she did not complain about that and we saw that how her eyes they had become as thin as these slits and uh, right so she was in a lot of pain but she did not tell her father about it she did not want to distract him and uh, you know like make him concerned about her health and about her safety rather he, she wanted that he should concentrate on saving the boat and the other members and the little girl had to undergo six minor operations this is how badly she was injured right and yes and a 6 year old boy who was not afraid to die and he was the one who came and told his father that see we're not afraid to die if we can all be together right showing that yes they are as strong as their father who took this brave uh, you can uh, say decision to go on this journey and uh, so they are there cooperating they are there understanding the problems the difficulties that he is facing and they're not complaining about their own problems right yes so let's just revise and uh, go through the questions here list the steps taken by the captain to protect the ship when rough weather began what were the steps that he did yes what were the things that he did to protect the ship when rough weather began so what did he do what did he do yes can you tell me let me get your answers now so what did he do we've discussed he double lashed everything right and donned the oil skins which is the protective gear and uh, so he did the life raft drill and uh, lowered uh, the sails right so only the storm jib was there and uh, so as to uh, save the boat uh, right from going out of the direction or you know being uh, tossed away because of the bad weather to check the flooding of the water in the ship what did he do to check uh, the water and because of the huge wave which came and crashed on the deck of the ship what happened what was entering right there was a lot of damage and so the flooding of the water in the ship how did he do that he made uh, you know like Im immediately emergency measures first of all was that he started looking for the spare pump right and everybody took shifts to make sure that the water was pumped out continuously did not enter and uh, so he stretched canvas across the holes which were there and uh, so like it was almost uh, 36 hours it continuously that they were taking these shifts and they were pumping out the water and they were doing whatever they could to save the ship from sinking right so yes so they did manage to make these measures or to stop the entry of water the mental condition of the voyage was on 4th and 5th january what was the mental condition of the voyage were they really very optimistic what what was their condition yes so if you you want to you have any doubt so please turn your pages back and let's have a look what happened here when was it what had happened here before that yeah So where are we? So on January four, this was it. That uh, there was a lot of damage uh, to the ship, and uh, so the captain is made this very important decision that he has to 
do something to save it because the weather was becoming bad again. Again, the, the clouds, they're coming and the waves rising high, the wind blowing, and he's worried about the safety, right? So he wanted that, uh, yes, so he has to take some important measures. And what was that? To find the Isle Amsterdam so that they can go to safety and by the end of uh, the day you know like yes so each one of them was quite scared even the captain also he was under a lot of stress but he did not show that right and yes so the next day when they were able to find the island so their condition was naturally it was uh, very tense they were stressed out and uh, they're just uh, hoping that the weather does not become bad again now, what difference did you notice between the reaction of the adults and the children faced with danger? Yes, what is the reaction of the adults and children when faced with danger? How do children behave? And how do adults behave? Can you uh, tell me? Yes? How is the reaction different? Adults and children, how are they going to respond? How are they going to behave in the face of danger? Who is going to be practical? Who's going to find a practical solution? Who's going to find a practical solution? Parents or the children? Parents, right? And the children generally, what do they do in case of a you know, problem? Do they panic? Do they cry? Yes, at times they do. But uh, you know what, children, you know, because of the innocence, because of the lack of experience at times, which I would say is a blessing in disguise, they are not actually aware of the dangers, right? So we have, uh, you know, like, yes, I'm just giving an example. Yeah, absolutely, children, they have faith in their parents. Their parents are going to sort out this uh, situation, you know, like, uh, right? But uh, sometimes, uh, you know, yeah, we have uh, that, uh, yes. Uh, the children, they have a more positive outlook. So they, their view to a problem is entirely different. And sometimes they can bring a new perspective to it also. That this is how we should handle it. So why just grumbling and complaining? Because the parents are always worried. They see the practical aspect of it. So they see that, yes, we have to come out of it. And the concern for the family, the concern for everyone. And the children that they feel that, okay, this is a problem the parents are going to sort out. Now in the chapter also, how is it that, what about the adults' behavior? They were concerned about, yes, the first priority was that the ship should not sink. So if the ship is safe, we are all safe. So the main priority was to save the ship from sinking. And the children, what did they do? They were in the midst of this danger. And uh, yes, so they're not grumbling. They're not complaining. They are encouraging. And right? so even a hug at that time and, you know, like a word of praise can do wonders to one's morale, right? And how it can boost your confidence, right? So sometimes we do see here, you know, like, yeah, elders, and sometimes it's quite the opposite also. So maybe, you know, like you have the elders of your family having fever or a cold, and they behave that, oh my God, I have the most deadliest disease ever. And we see children, right? So like, they maybe they're not aware of the problem that they are going through. So that is why their innocence helps them to remain positive. So sometimes it's very, very, you know, what uh, you can say motivating to see children behave in such a manner. And so we've read about two wonderful children here. We have uh, Suzanne and Jonathan and how they brave, were so brave in this time of, uh, you can uh, say, a big problem which they were facing. So how they helped their parents, how they encouraged. And they're saying, we're not afraid to die if we can all be together. They don't know that, yeah, we will be dying uh, alone, separately, right? But he's, they are there comforting themselves that if we are in this storm together, whatever happens, it's that we are going to face the same problems, the same difficulties, right? Clear? So amazing children. And of course, we have here, you people are also very brave. How bravely you have uh, gone uh, through, you know, like uh, this uh, time at home, right? Are you managing with your studies and you're coping with everything? You're away from your friends, which otherwise, yeah, friends which help you out and friends who land you in trouble also.
So you've been away for a long time, isn't it? Yes, so let's continue here. The next is, how does the story suggest that optimism helps to endure the direst stress? What is optimism? What is optimism? Optimistic approach. It's a positive approach. Yes? Right? So, yeah, that we'll come out of this. We are going to be safe. We are going to come out of this problem. That is an optimistic approach, a positive approach. Endure the direst stress, the most stressful situation. And uh, I think so, like the biggest example we can give, it's the situation that we are going through right now. So if we are optimistic, if we are there, you know, thinking, yes, we will come out of this. I have the strength and the courage. I will fight. So we can come out of the difficulty. But if you give up hope, what if the captain did not uh, take this decision, yes, to change his course? What would have happened? If he had, you know, like, yeah, may started crying in front of the children, that, oh my God, we are here in the middle of uh, the ocean. What are we going to do? So it would have been a very negative example. It would have been a very sad behavior. So optimism. So if you are positive, you will definitely find out a solution to the problem. So you'll be able to come out of that difficult situation. So always, always we should remain optimistic in life. So it definitely brings a lot of, uh, you can uh, say positivity. It does help us to come out of the difficult situations. So what lessons do we learn from such hazardous experience when we are face to face with it? So this, these experiences, they make us realize that, uh, yes, see all these things that the author had done. So whether it was his preparation, his information, his knowledge, everything there, his preparedness, all those skills that he acquired, they helped him to survive. And secondly here, when we are face to face with death, we learn the importance of life, right? And if we are there, you know, we value our life, we will never ever give up our efforts to survive. So in kind of these hazardous experiences, when we talk about all these people here, so whether the mountaineers, all uh, these uh, swimmers or other people who have taken uh, such uh, risks, right? And they have taken these risks at the cost of putting their lives in danger. So we learn to realize that yeah, life is so important. We just can't let go. And why do you think people undertake such adventurous expeditions in spite of the risks involved? Yes, we have uh, done that, that why people take these risks, okay? Yes, so you have discussed about all that, okay? Yes, so with that, I think so this chapter is uh, over. I'll be sending you more questions, right? And uh, so you'll be writing those answers and uh, we'll see your PDFs.